Hey guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and today I wanted to talk to you about the AMD RX 5700. Now, this is the non XT model, uh, but the cards right now, I, I, I release Sunday on the uh, 7th of July, the cards are all going to be pretty much the same, no matter which manufacturer you get them from, it's all going to be blower style cards. So, this 5700 launch uh, was met with anticipation. Um, did AMD drop the ball? Uh, we'll kind of talk about that towards the end of the video. I just wanted to show you some of my performance numbers, uh, go over a few things, and uh, talk about any my experience with the card as a whole. But the new 5700 uh, cards from AMD are, are relatively decent performers. They come in at a range anywhere from 350 all the way up to 450 if you get the... Uh, 5700 XT Anniversary Edition or 50th Anniversary Edition that AMD has. Uh, performance uh, is, is comparable to the RTX 2060, uh, whether it's the 2060 Super um, or the 2060, but we'll talk more about that here in a second. It comes with uh, features such as uh, anti-lag, which I believe Hardware on Box Tim is going to actually be testing. I, I wouldn't have the capability of testing that uh, to its fullest, so check out his channel or their channel for that information because I'm interested in, in them testing out the anti-lag, the AMD anti-lag and see how it performs. Anti-lag, less lag equals more wins. Radeon anti-lag reduces latency dramatically providing ultra fast response time and giving you a dynamic, dynamic edge over your competition. So that should be interesting. Uh, it does, the free sync uh, capabilities of this card does work with my monitor, which I do have the Acer Predator XB272, uh, 27 inch. Um, so it's a G Sync monitor and it works perfectly fine uh, with this card. And most of them, uh, as, as we've noticed, NVIDIA has released a, a bunch of monitors or cap compatible monitors that, you know, work with free sync and, and, um, all that good stuff. So it's nice that, uh, you know, I'm able to push my monitor. Um, refresh rate a little bit higher. It is a little bit more power conservative, but I guess it really depends on the test. Uh, we'll talk about that more here in a second. Uh, but let's talk about specs. So the 5700 has 36 compute units, a game frequency, which I guess you could say, I don't know if that's, that, that wouldn't be the base frequency because the base frequency is 1465, game frequency of 1625, and a boost frequency of 1725. Now with my card, depending on thermals, because all cards are dependent upon thermals, uh, I was seeing an average around 1760, somewhere in there, with the 5700. Um, it's got uh, 2304 streaming processors and typical uh, board power or power draw is 180 watts. Uh, it's running GDDR6, 8 gigabytes of it, memory interface 256 bit, bandwidth of 448, um, and a memory memory speed of uh, 14 uh, gigabytes per second. Compare that to the XT, which is a power draw of 225. It has more compute units, about four more. It has a higher gain frequency of 1755, base of 1605, and a boost of 1905. But I have seen some people hit 2000 or a little bit, like right around 2000, right, right above it. Um, and of course, it's it's got same 8 gigs of GDDR6, uh, same 256-bit uh, bus, uh, 14 gigabytes per second, so on and so forth. Um, this card is hot. Uh, we we would we should have known that with blower style cards and uh, they're gonna run hot now. Adam board partners are speculated to be around in August, and I would agree with Steve or anybody out there who's recommending it. Wait for the Adam board partners. Wait for them to release, uh, you know, open air coolers and not blower style coolers because the, the the cards would perform better uh, with the blower style card. I was sacrificing uh, noise for performance. And speaking of performance. Uh, AMD's uh, Wattman uh, was a pretty good util utility, utility to use. They even have something in here where you can see there's manual, auto uh, undervolt GPU, auto uh, overclock GPU, and auto uh, overclock memory. However, when I chose auto overclock memory, it pushed the memory up to 930, but 
there was big issues with that. Maybe it might be the drivers, maybe it might be the car, not entirely sure, but I know a number of other people have been experiencing it besides myself. For example, this is what we get. Anything over 900 megahertz on the memory is green or transparent green or the system locks up. Uh, we've come to expect this over the years when AMD releases a new product. The drivers or the initial drivers usually have issues, uh, so give it some time and it should be fine. If you haven't bought the card, then by the time you do think about buying the card, it should be a lot better. Um, the temps got up there, the GPU clock, we never did hit, If you, I'm not sure why it's saying 1963 megahertz up here, because that's very, that's very much not true. I can't even get past, even with an 1850 clock and MSI afterburner here, I can't even get past... Um, 1830 I think 1830 was the highest I saw and then 900 on the mem is the max that I could do uh, as far as overclocks which compared to stock that's all it is 1750 out of the box 875 on the mem so it's not much and then of course the the memory the power limits kind of more of like a placebo slider I haven't seen anything uh, I haven't seen an improvement because this card is locked they locked this card because they don't want it to compete with the 5700 XT which is smart right you don't want to release a product that competes with your own product because then people just get the lesser model overclock and stuff like that. It'd be interesting to see if there's any type of physical mods or software mods uh, that you can do uh, to uh, release that power limit so you can get the full potential out of the 5700. Um, however, this thing does not come with a dual BIOS switch. At least I didn't see one on this card anywhere. So if you're going to flash the BIOS, if you don't know how to fix the issue and you don't have a dual BIOS, I would not recommend it. Just be aware of that. Uh, when I did play around with the AMD utility, uh, the uh, the auto tuner put me at 1830, even though I could go up to 1850. Even if I try to go past 1850, I'll go ahead and show you right now. 18, let's do 1880, and if I try to save it, it just pushes it back down to 1850. So it will not the 5700 will not go past 1850 on the core or 930 on the memory. Now, uh, when I did play around with the AMD uh, Wattman utility and kind of let it do like its own overclocking and GPU and stuff like that. Uh, this is what I got for the temps. I'm gonna go ahead and switch myself down to the bottom here. So we got uh, a peak temp on the GPU core of 83. Uh, I don't know why hardware info is showing the memory as HBM temperature when it's GDR6, but the memory temperature was at 84C. The T junction or the hotspot temp that AMD records is at 102C. Um, which is still okay, but that's uncomfortable for me. Uh, we saw a peak wattage of 182, 182 watts, uh, and the fan speed max was 53%, which um, I believe that was over, yeah around 4,000 RPM. So it got, it, it got a little bit noisy, but not too bad. Now, in order to uh, make the choice of, of sacrificing or dealing with higher amount of noise, to get better performance, I increased the fan speed up to around 75%. That brought the core temperatures down to 70, and uh, the memory temperatures as well down to 70. And then the hot spot or T junction uh, or junction temperature was around. It got up to about 84C, uh, averaging around 70 on the core when you increase your fans, and averaging around 82 on the hottest spot of the board. Um, and then max power draw was 156 watts. So playing around with the AMD utility, uh, you can auto-tune it. Uh, maybe when the, the latest drivers come out or a new revision of the drivers, it will perform a little bit better. But I just manually set mine to 1850 um, and 900 on the mem. As I said, be careful with the memory. Uh, anything past 900 for me on this specific card, maybe I just got unlucky just didn't work so I'm just gonna wait for the next revision of the drivers so right now let's get into some gaming benchmarks uh, throw up a couple of uh, slides and information for you and then we'll go over the my overall thoughts of the product uh, in this recent launch
So there you go. Um, basically, the RX 5700 is on par with, or it, it really depending on the title, it's either going to beat the 2060 Super or the 2060 Super is going to beat it. It really depends on the title. I'm sure AMD's always been good about uh, driver optimizations over time, so I'm sure we'll see better results. But uh, it's all about price and, and really do you care about ray tracing? If you don't care about ray tracing, what's in your budget? Um, you know, is that more money that you, you save? The money that you save, could you put that towards a better part in your overall build? That's all questions you need to ask yourself. But the RX 5700 is going to be slightly better than the RTX 2060. Um, almost nipping at the hills of the regular 2070, the RTX 2070, not the Super, but the 2070. Uh, and so it's, it's certain titles perform different differently. Uh, there's full... Uh, tech tuber guides out there where they did more gaming and and tested it out um but it's all about your budget and what your overall goal is if, if one of the games that they tested is on there uh and you see it performs better than the competitor then go for it but right now in front of you i got the geekbench uh for compute results and this is one of the reasons why i'm interested in it not only in in some of the gaming tests did we see the rx 5700 perform better than the Vega 64 uh, but it also outperformed the RTX 2060 and in the compute performance the peak that I was able to hit the top number here or excuse me the second one is 318.250 now let's compare that against a couple other people so 318.250 against the 1660 Ti was 205,202 now if we go further down 302.148 for the RTX 2080 and then if we go down a little bit further on a 1080 Ti, the peak I was able to get was 246,011. So the compute performance of these cards are actually really good. And this is the non-XT model, so keep that in mind. And then when we look at the, the, the new egg chart, I went ahead and chose the RTX 2060, 2070 Supers, uh, and the uh, RX 5700 and XT. And you know this is the featured chart. It looks nice. You know we got the cards up there. Of course we see the the ASRock and XFX variant of the XT. But if we short sort by the lowest price, watch what happens. It's AMD. Okay. So AMD is coming in. This is why they did the price cuts, and this is why Nvidia did their own price cuts prior to their launch. It's because the AMD, while it may not be competing at the high end, is bringing in a competitive edge at the mid-range which is what we need we need this competition to get fierce again so that way these card prices will drop uh, Nvidia in my opinion was just going off on a limb and getting out too far out of a stretch and uh, putting prices at ridiculous amounts so hopefully we can see some initial uh, price drops which we did we did see initial price drops but what I'm talking about is is additional price drops sometime in the future so here we can see 350 350 350 all top row and then we jump up to 399 so 400 dollars for the uh, rx 5700 xt and they're all blower style cards that's why i said wait for adding board partners so that, that way you don't have to worry about temps the better temps you have the better the overclock even though with the 5700 even if you did get better temps i'm pretty sure you won't be able to hit those limits because it, again that card is locked so maybe the 57 spend the extra 50 and get the xt that's up to you 
Uh, but the next competitor is $400 with the RTX 2060 Super. Now the RTX 2060 Super gets beaten by the 5700 non-XT, but the XT vari variant just beats it and the 2070. Where's the 2070? It's not on this row. Got to keep going. All right, there's a gigabyte RTX 2070 Super for $499. So that's 500 bucks. When you can get a, a, a 5700 XT, maybe an add-in board model be be like 450 or something like that. So that's 50 bucks you're saving. And in some games and some titles, you're going to beat the RTX uh, 2070 Super. So it's really up to you. It's up to your budget. If I were you and you're in interested in the AMD versions of these cards, uh, one, not only wait because driver optimizations, um, AMD definitely needs to improve that. But two, also wait because there's going to be add-in board partners with better models. Maybe they might overclock a little bit better than the blower styles. Uh, who's to who's to say? Uh, but it, it is a good buy. It's good to see AMD back in the space, being competitive uh, in, in the mid range. Uh, it would like to see them in the high end range, competing against you know the TIs, uh, the 28 TIs. But you know that's that's a, a remarkable uh, GPU. It sucks the price is so high, but the reason that Nvidia can price it so high is because there's no competition on that level. So hopefully we can see AMD sometime in the future bringing the competition to that high end market, so that way we can see a price drop. Besides that, guys, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good jazz. Let me know what your thoughts are on this AMD launch. Um, the CPU version or the CPU side of this launch is absolutely remarkable. I am totally impressed with AMD. Uh, their stock markets and investors are impressed. Uh, so it's good to see AMD back in the space. Uh, welcome back, guys. Team Red. Um, let's see what the competition leaves out. You know, I got all NVIDIA GPUs. I got a couple of AMD now. I want to get some more AMD, but make it worth my while. Let's see what you got, AMD. Welcome back.